In the far corner of the museum, there's an area where only those with the strongest of stomachs will venture. John Ablett is one of those in charge of this mysterious world. This next room holds some of the most amazing, bizarre-looking creatures that you've ever seen. Some of these animals you might not even realize are actually real animals. And we call this part of the museum the tank room. This vast room is filled with rarely seen creatures from the deep, all perfectly preserved. This is the tentacle of a colossal squid, what we believe is the largest species of squid. They've never found a fully grown colossal squid, only juvenile ones, but we think they reach up to about 18 meters. And this one came from the stomach of a sperm whale, one of the few animals that's big enough to eat it. One of the amazing things is these hooked suckers that they have. And these are used for grabbing onto their prey. These actually turn and screw into the flesh of anything that it catches to stop them from getting away. Today, John's preparing some cuttlefish for a new exhibition about fantastic beasts. He needs to work fast while they're still fresh. One of the amazing things about alcohol preserve collections is the fact you've got the whole animal. You could cut this open and see what it had eaten just before it died. You could investigate it for parasites. There are so many more things that you can do, which is why they really are truly amazing specimens. These came from, from Cornwall. They came up this morning. So we're going to start with this one, because it's uh, probably the most complete in the nicest condition. Kind of arrange it to the pose we want it to stay in because the fixing preservation will kind of harden up the tissues, uh, make it less flexible. Handling the special preservatives is dangerous work. This chemical, the formalin, just stops the rotting process. There's a few frozen patches, so it's a little tricky to get the syringe in, but just need to get enough of the chemical in to fix it from the inside as well as the outside. It stops it from degrading, and hopefully the specimen will last hundreds of years. Next, the cuttlefish will be immersed in a tank of formalin so that it's preserved inside and out. And in 10 days, it'll be ready to go on display. The most prized specimen in this undersea world is the biggest and strangest of all. This is Archie, giant squid. I have quite a big personal attachment to this specimen. She's about 8.62 metres in length, and it came to the museum in 2004 when it was caught by some fishermen off the coast of the Falcon Islands. And they pulled up their nets, found this amazing creature. Archie is a girl. Uh, it's quite easy to sex a giant squid because they're one of few squids to have external penises in the case of a male. Uh, and for a male giant squid, the penis would be about a metre in length. So no metre length penis, definitely a girl. This complete giant squid, almost the length of a double-decker bus, is one of the few anywhere in the world. It took 20 people to prepare this specimen, and it's now one of the museum's biggest attractions. It's incredibly rare to get a complete giant squid. You can see it has an eye on either side, and it has the second largest eye of any living creature. And you can see in this specimen, they have some very, very large suckers. And this is what they use for grabbing onto prey, pulling it back so they can hold it and eat it. This is the closest that most visitors will ever get to a deep sea giant. People relate them to these monsters of the deep, you know, the kind of stories of these grabbing sailors, pulling boats down to their depth. And just to have a glimpse at this huge animal that, until relatively recently, people didn't know was actually a real animal is, is really, truly amazing. The Natural History Museum is in one of the richest neighborhoods in Britain. But buried beneath its newest wing is a foul-smelling secret. A hundred years ago, huge dead whales were brought to the museum to rot in specially dug shallow graves called whale pits. Once they'd rotted, their skeletons could be added to the collection. 
whale expert Richard Sabin knows all about them. These were huge holes in the ground, full of sand. You put your specimen into the sand, cover it over, leave it for a year or so. The bugs and the beetles come along and they do their business and they munch away at all the soft tissues. And after about a year, you actually end up with something that looks exactly like this wonderful photograph. It does generate an awful lot of smell. And with uh, the wind in the right direction on a nice warm summer's day, you get complaints from the neighbours. And unfortunately, living in South Kensington, working in South Kensington, probably not the best place to be burying partially decomposed whales. There were quite a few complaints, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why, along with the Second World War, that the practice stopped. And there are a few more surprising secrets from these gentle giants. This 100-year-old waxy lump might not look like much, but it's from a sperm whale's intestines and is extremely rare. You'll smell it before you see it. Known as ambergris, it's been used to make perfumes for centuries, and a piece this size would have been worth thousands of pounds. This used to be more valuable than gold. Can you smell it yet? It's a really unusual material. It's basically made up of the parts of the animals that the sperm whale eats, things like squid. When it first comes out of the animal, it smells like crap, literally. Once it emerges from the sperm whale, it floats to the surface of the ocean, and then the waves start to wash away that horrible kind of fecal smell, the poo smell that it has. These lumps can float on the surface of the ocean for months or years before they wash up on beaches and are found by people. It has quite a pleasant, sort of musky, slightly sweet odour. I love the smell. I really do. <laughs> Ambergris was also loved by royalty. There was a recipe that was a favourite of King Charles II, and it was lightly scrambled eggs with shavings of ambergris. Uh, very unusual. Highly acquired taste, I should imagine. Richard has spent the last 29 years in charge of the museum's huge and popular whale collection. I think one of the things that really makes whales fascinating for people is the fact that they are so unseen, unknown, mysterious. For centuries, millennia even, these huge creatures have been such a, a surprise when they appear on our beaches. They suddenly appear from their world into our world. The museum's stuffed animal storeroom lies behind locked doors. Lorraine is one of the handful of people with access to this hidden world. You put the lights on, everything is still, but suddenly all the eyes are there, just looking. And it's a complete treasure trove for anyone who gets the opportunity to come and see behind the scenes. People who are fortunate enough to come into this space, and there aren't many, are always completely amazed. It's a world of wonder. They've all got their charm. Some more charming than others, possibly. This one always amuses me. You've got the fangs coming out here. Looks cute, but also menacing all at the same time. This probably stood in a Victorian parlour or something. You can see the wire, so where the claws are gone. He looks to me like would have been holding a tray or something. So just hiding round the corner, literally, because they're too big to go on any shelving. We've got some giraffes just hanging about, and I like to come and see them. It makes me feel quite small when I stand next to this one, but it is rather lovely. I like to come and stand amongst them. It's quite calming. To Lorraine's eagle eye, this world-renowned collection is more like a stuffed animal's A&E. I mean, everything I look at, I want to treat. <laughs> Bit of a split bottom situation. This one, oh, just looking over and saying, pick me, pick me. There was a bit of literal jaw dropping on this one. <laughs> so they've just uh, improvised and they've done a bit of a crepe bandage just to kind of hold everything together. 